So a really, really warm welcome. Absolutely delighted to be sharing our journey at DICE. I'm Jenny Watson, I'm the head teacher, and my co-presenters today are Lima, Liam and Julian, two of our deputy heads, and you can spot them in our DICE team in emoji there. Really, we're looking at our session, looking at the focus of learning across the four contexts and how we're developing outdoor expeditions. So we look forward to sharing this and telling you a little bit more. So we're going to start with a little bit about our context and our journey. Um, there'll be a lot of reference to Scotland's curriculum, the refresh narrative, and how we're using the four contexts at DICE and really looking at, as we move forward, how we are reimagining our curriculum at DICE School. So there will be pauses where we can, you know, ask questions and we've got a few things that we would like to share with you and get your reactions to as well. So um, please, we want it to be interactive as we go. So just a little bit about myself. This is my second headship. Um, I was head teacher at Middleton Park School for about five years. And then I joined Education Scotland as Senior Education Officer in Joe Mackay's team in the Curriculum Innovation. And I'm delighted that Elizabeth is here. Elizabeth Maguire and Joan were a very small team for about two years and I loved working with both of them. Part of my role at Education Scotland was I was very much involved in the refresh narrative in Scotland's Curriculum for Excellence. I was actually involved in that while I was still at Middleton Park School and then very much involved when there was a very soft launch two years ago and then in sharing the key messages um, in my role at Education Scotland. And when I was at Education Scotland as well, this wonderful realising the ambition was um, launched. And it's really privileged to work alongside Shan and Lynn and their team about looking at how we could use this. So it's a real privilege to come back into school and be able to use some of the knowledge that I gleaned, some of the learning, and put it back into school context. So our context at DICE, um, we've got about 500 children in the school. We're from three right through to primary seven. We've got a language support provision that provides um, support for children across Aberdeen. It's been seven years of real challenge for the school with many changes in the leadership team and with staffing over the last seven years. And that's brought lots of challenges, shortages of staff and difficulty with capacity. Um, DICE is very much a village. People who live in DICE are very proud to be DICERs. They love their community. It's a real strong community pride. It's got fabulous access to the city and to the Shire. And it's surrounded by amazing woodlands and open common spaces. And it is absolutely DYW village. The opportunities, we are surrounded by business, industry, the airport, the train station, hotels. Um, and that's just a really a wonderful um, enriched opportunity for partnership working. But also with its challenges, obviously huge challenges with the oil and gas and the energy sector. And with COVID as well, that's brought its own challenge. So very much a changing, a changing community, changing employment, and something that we're really keen to, to catch, to look at as we move forward um, with our plans for the curriculum. So just a little bit about the journey, the journey that we've been on. Um, can I ask everyone just to mute, please? That really helps. And welcome. People are joining in as we go, and that is just great. Um, this is going to be recorded as well, so I meant to say at the start, so if you don't want to be in the film, just keep your camera off. Um, and we will be sharing the slides afterwards too. Okay, so I joined the school um, just at the end of October, so it's really been a five-month journey. Liam joined as a new DHT just um, two weeks after me, just towards the end of November. And then one of our deputy heads, Emma, came back from maternity leave just in the, bit, in the middle of February. And Julian has been here throughout. So we're a real mix of two brand new people to the team, but wonderful that we've got Julian and Emma with that knowledge and expertise of the school and the community. So in the five months since I've been here, we had eight weeks um, when everyone was in school. And then obviously 
we had lockdown in January and then we had the early years in primary one to three returning and then just last week with primary four to seven returning. So it's been a real um, change after change after change. And in that time, we started looking at the four contexts way back in November and we started using that with the staff talking about it. What would that look like in DICE in our context? And December, we had a great opportunity to look at Winter Wonderland and to see what that might look like with very much a catalyst of the outdoors there. Um, we then had great plans for Burns and Liam is going to tell you more about that. We had some fantastic um, work all planned out before we knew we were going to lockdown, so we'd be quite agile and change, as did everyone else in Scotland at the same time. And then we've been looking at Walk in the Past, which we'll tell you more about, and more recently our Monster March. So this is very much our journey over the last, last five months um, since I've been in the school. Um, there's been so many silver linings, and we hope to pick up on those as we go through. Um, obviously, no one would wish what's happened to COVID on anyone, but, you know, there have been opportunities and we're really keen that some of those silver linings we continue with as, as we go forward. So I'm going to pause now and pass on to Liam, who is going to tell you a little bit more about our Burns context. Thank you, Liam. Thank you, Jenny, and um, thank you for the introduction as well. Just yet, yeah, I'm Liam Sturrock, and as Jenny mentioned, I'm one of the new deputies here at Dice School. Um, and as Jenny said, you know, we had a lot of plans in place for celebrating Burns as a school throughout January, and we had um, plans and ideas for creative approaches really with the, the, the refresh narrative and the, the refresh curriculum in mind um, and using creative approaches. As you know, January brought fresh closers for us and for everyone across Scotland. Um, so really there was the, I guess, the one benefit was the, the new creative approaches required again for us to um, really think about how we can still involve creativity in our approaches here at DICE. So we used the four contexts again to look at how we could celebrate Burns at DICE School. Um, and we planned using those four contexts to come together as a school community online um, whilst working from home to give consistency and creative approaches across the school, all the way from our early learning centre right up into our primary seven class. So as a staff, we planned um, our Burns celebrations and, and Burns um, theme um, coming together, the use of ThingLink, and you can see um, our first thing link here um, on the screen at the moment um, developed as a team you know we've been um, embracing thing link as an opportunity for um, learner engagement parent engagement and really for staff to use creative approaches um, to engage learners using technologies um, so we use thing link in google classroom to present a number of opportunities for um, celebrating burns through the context and january then as i said was planned through the four contexts and as we see on the next slide our learning across the four contexts was planned using the template format. It was for us, it was a, a fresh and new approach here at DICE um, using um, the four contexts to plan. And as you can see, um, it was at very initial um, stages of our journey. So we looked at um, really the focus was the ethos and life of our school as a community, looking at the Wednesday choice activities to um, inspire creativity, have learners engage in relevant and meaningful activities. We used our local context um, to develop Doric activities and um, learning experiences for our children at home. And we also then embraced aspects of pupil leadership. Thankfully, the primary sevens had been involved in some of the planning of our four contexts before we came off. And we were able to take some of their ideas into a digital format, such as our quizzes, our Doric Word of the Day videos, um, some competitions and challenges that they'd created before um, January, before we came off. So we were able to host a lot of these um, virtually. Um, and the um, opportunities for personal achievement were still able to be very much met online with um, our competitions being set for poetry, singing and music and creative arts um, through Google Classroom. 
And all of this learning um, planned alongside our usual curriculum areas and subjects with a consistent approach across the school. As you can see here, we're following a consistent approach for all stages with the, the set learning activities um, and the set learning themes which will continue at DICE um, post COVID enclosures. All of this culminated in an interdisciplinary learning celebration um, on the 25th with everyone invited online and that was given the size of the school um, broken up into different areas um, I guess you know looking at the capabilities of our technology we felt it best to to do this as a, as a um, broken up into different parts of our school um, and we were very pleased and proud of the real engagement and um, from speaking to staff here the increased engagement in our learners um, with the new fresh approach and the, the creative um, approaches online and as you'll see from our next video clip we um, wanted to share just a, a small clip of one of something we're very proud of um, that was shared as part of our context. Play Flap in the Wheel by Sheena Blackcomb. Play Flap in the Wheel, said Alfred Squale. He blows his tail and blasts his tack. He sacks his bag with crisp and juice. And oh! And off he went! So just a small clip there of a shared learning experience at home inspired by um, our opportunities for personal achievement and also supported by our approaches, um, our creative approaches using um, our teaching staff and local knowledge to deliver some exciting contexts for Doric learning. If we move on to the next slide, we used, as well as this as a planning format, we used the four contexts to evidence um, our learning and achievement. Um, and this very much was our first time doing this as well, so it was a work in progress. Um, and as you'll see here, our teachers began to collect evidence from the month of January for the four contexts based on our Burns um, theme using the, the four contexts, adding photographs and text to narrate exactly the, the achievements, the learning experiences and the rich um, learning that had taken place in that class. And this is just an example from our primary five class of that. Um, and if we move on, um, what I want you to think about at the moment is it's time for us just to stop and reflect for a moment. We, we would really like to hear about a context that's encouraged creativity in your setting. So something that's um, sparked creativity either during lockdown and um, during school closures, or it could be something that, that goes particularly well in your school and, and creativity is really brought out through this context, this learning context. So I'll stop for a minute so we can share some of our favourite contexts at our school and very much specific to your, your school's context. Oh, starting to come in now. Thank you, Barbara. Oh, that sounds really exciting. A massive dinosaur egg appearing in the playground one morning. What a creative approach to really spark imagination and have the pupils just engaged and enthused. Um, and Chris is talking about um, the IDL creating, uh, bringing forth some really creative work uh, from pupils that came to the academy. It'd be interesting, Chris, to find out um, some of the, maybe the context behind your IDL. Donna is talking here about um, a Dragon's Den apprentice approach um, for her setting. So another um, great example of a context which sparks creativity and innovation. We have some um, work coming in here and focuses very much you know, focused on schools and their settings. We've got enterprise approaches, um, uh, war context and working within the local community and the village community to learn more about um, a creative approach to learning about the local environment and a, a very much context based approach. We've got well, a virtual trip, a lot of STEM related activities we're talking about here. Carol, I love fairy gardens. That that definitely is something that we have um, had some inspiration from in our early learning centre um, here at Dice. So um, another beautiful one for inspiring creativity and imagination. Hopefully, some of these ideas coming through will give you a flavour of some opportunities for when you're planning your own creative approaches to the curriculum of. Um, 
creative and meaningful contexts that you might want to think about using in your own settings. So thank you for that. And thank you to those who are still sharing. And I'm going to hand over now to Gillian, um, our deputy head teacher. So thank you for all those interactions. Okay, so we're going to have a little look at our early learning uh, centre and our primary one journey um, from August until now. So at the end of the first lockdown, we were using um, ILD and it was quite old, quite clunky. And on reflection, we just didn't think it was very suitable for what we wanted moving forward. So we had quite a long discussion with parents and our practitioners. And as many other schools have, we brought in Seesaw. Um, and between August and December, it was really that bedding in time for it, very much being led by the, the practitioners sending out the posts. And we had the odd comment, the odd like from our parents, but not the engagement that we that the tool is really meant for, that the two way conversation. So when we went back into lockdown in January, we were looking at ways that we could really spark that conversation and, and really stress the fact that learning happens at home, not just in school. So we used our thing links, uh, which are, that'll be the buzzword of today. Um, the thing links just made everything much easier for sharing. So instead of sending out four or five different videos, we sent one link to the thing link and on that, there was the learning context for the day or for the week. So really at the focus of everything, this is our, our golden thread, is our interactions, our spaces and experiences, which have obviously come from the play pedagogy and feature really, really highly in re, uh, realising the ambition as well. Okay. So uh, first of all, we had a discussion as a team and we thought that favourite stories would be an excellent context for our early years. So we started off with our good old favourites with the Gruffalo and Julia Donaldson's Squash and a Squeeze and stories that were familiar for the families. And each member of staff made a little video every week. Getting out and about, you can see in the corner there, we've got somebody down on one of the local beaches. Uh, it was taking the different areas of the curriculum and thinking about learning provocations for the children that they could explore with their families. And because of these videos, it meant that everybody was connecting with everybody in nursery. It wasn't just one practitioner that you were seeing a video for. You were able to see the whole team. We also have our Woody Wednesdays in nursery anyway, where we go to our woods and our playground. And it was felt that actually we really wanted to keep that going um, strongly through our conversations as a team came the fact that the first lockdown was a lot easier because of the weather and parents and families were able to get out and we just felt that actually we needed to give people that opportunity to take a, a step away from the computer to get outside and still have that oh, but we're learning it's okay so on a wednesday we had our woody wednesdays and again the girls were making their videos and they were outside in the local environment setting their activities for everybody very quickly our engagement went back up um, we had lots of photos, lots of comments, videos were being shared and we did weekly feedback with the parents on Google Forms as well, asking them what worked, what didn't work, what would you like to see more of. Very aware that if we were setting arts and crafts activities that actually not everybody had those things at home. So things, you know, asking those really simple questions, what works, what doesn't, what can we do to make it better? The evaluations we pulled all together and we shared that with some of the photos that were being sent in to us and it just gave feedback to the parents. It let, gave them opportunities to share um, photos of their friends with each other so that actually the children were still seeing each other too. From one of the feedback forums, we had um, a request for some sort of video chat. Obviously with the school, we were using Google, so it was a lot easier. We had our Google Meets. So we introduced our key worker uh, catch-ups and we used Teams for that. Now I'm not going to tell you that it was all wonderful and easy. We had a few moments when we couldn't get connected and couldn't speak, but um, it was really wonderful to see our youngest children being able to see each other and interact with each other from there at home. And our practitioners in nursery were fabulous at singing and dancing and playing all the games that they would normally do here, but through a screen. So they worked really, really well. So since we've come back, 
the focus has really been on taking that engagement that we had and developing it in the setting. Um, we've been on a journey. You'll hear that a lot today. Um, we had to really think when we came back about what provocations we were setting up indoors and outdoors. We've done a huge amount of work in our outdoor area. We're very lucky with our space and we're really encouraging that learning to be happening outside. Um, so it's a step in the right direction. I'm not going to say we're there yet, but definitely the, the work that was happening over um, the lockdown has really started to come into the nursery. And I think if we move on to the next one, Jenny, we've got a little clip from one of our little learners. Oh. I found a big open. Open space. Big squeezy hug. A big squeezy hug. Sit down. Say a squash and a squeeze. Squash and So since we've come back, uh, we've obviously been looking at our, our statistics on uh, Seesaw and as you can see from that image in the top left corner, we've had another, we had a bit of a, a dip and from just the talking to parents at drop off and pick up, we said, you know, what, what can we do to make that better? And it was felt that actually they, they really enjoyed the thing links that we were sending, the activities that we were sending home. So we've tied in with the Monster March that's going on at the moment and we've created Play at Home. And again, it's the same idea as we were doing over lockdown where each person's setting a little activity for the children to do, all linked to our monsters. And there are monsters everywhere coming in on Seesaw and Google Classroom and indoors and outdoors. So it's lovely to see. The uh, engagement's gone back up. As a result, as you can see in that figure, the families have really started to share not just the monster magic at home, but actually just the, the everyday learning. And that's really lovely to see because actually the those connections, those conversations that we always have, have embraced in the early years, we were worried that we were going to lose that with the gate drop off and, and parents not really being encouraged into the nursery. So it's really lovely that we're able to still have those conversations and they really are our focus. We want that connection to be developed. So um, the best part I can probably leave this section on is the comment um, in the bubble. This is a comment that was left by one of our new families who were due to join us in January, second week back. Obviously that couldn't quite happen. Um, they joined us electronically on Seesaw. They joined in all of the activities and when we finally got back into the building, this was the comment that was left. And I'm just going to let you have a minute to read it because it's quite a powerful quote. Okay. So it was really lovely and reinforced by both mum and dad when they were dropping off that actually they didn't feel that they had missed out on anything. They felt that actually their child already knew all the staff, they knew the staff, they actually approached the staff by name when they were starting on their very first day. And if that's not a little success story, then actually I don't know what is because it was really wonderful for that child. So on to the next one, we're going to ask you again to share your approaches with us. So can you share any creative approaches for engaging with your families in the chat pane? Perfect, that's lots of things starting to come in now. So virtual cuppas with parents. We had, yep, coffee and catch up online. Fun Fridays. Yep, cooking and sharing success. That was something else that um, we managed to have with a partnership just after we came back with our local ASDA, where they provided us with some baking ingredients. So every child's nursery went home with uh, fruity flapjack ingredients. Um, and we had, our seesaw was filled with uh, lots of baking and we had some samples that were brought in for us too, which is always better.
I think so. Yeah, lots of people saying the same thing about see, so it's been really fabulous way of, of interacting with families. Okay. Right, thank you. We will thank you. keep the ideas coming in. Thank you, Gillian, and um, great. Thank you for sharing all these ideas. Um, we'll be using lots of them. Really appreciate it. <laughs> it's great to share. Thank you. Um, I'm going to move back down now to when we were all in lockdown. And for us, that was a wee bit of a silver lining because when you know you join a school and there's 500 children and 50 members of staff, and you have eight weeks with them, you're frantically just trying to remember names and faces and work out the yeah. procedures. And um, so when it came to lockdown, we had 40 children, which kind of changed every day, but roughly 40 children in school with a much smaller amount of staff. And that really led an opportunity to pilot the idea of expeditions with a much smaller number because doing with 500 children and scaling it up is quite a daunting task. So as you saw in the four contexts, January in, in January, Wednesday was very much our personal achievement ethos and life of the school day with lots of activities going out. So for the children in school, that meant it was expedition day with Mrs. Watson, the favorite day of my week. And the primary fours to sevens would all come out with myself and members of the support team outside for the whole morning. And P1 to 3 came out for the whole afternoon. And we just got to try out lots of different activities, lots of creativity, lots of problem solving. We had um, Kelly kettles and we had, that was one of the favorite things was the Kelly kettles and marshmallows. A magical moment when they realized that bread turned into toast over the fire. The snow, that was just one of the most perfect days, building snow sculptures and, you know, just having fun out in the snow and working together. So during that time, it's able to sort of look and think um, with the team as to what outdoor expeditions might look like. And when we had a February in service, we we're able to share with staff just a very short clip that I'm going to share with you now about what the expeditions looked like during lockdown. Oh, last minute. And again, you know, great, uh, Michelle Watty, our PE specialist, um, got really involved in this. And we'd Sally, a partnership from Adventure Aberdeen. And working with the support staff, it was great to just explore different ideas and to try out things. Um, the children absolutely loved it, listening really closely to what they were saying. You know, we got comments like, you know, one child said to me one day, this is just too good to be true. I can't believe we're getting to do this. Another child, you know, the PSA, heard him running out at the end of the day to his grandma saying, that's been the best day I've ever had. So we kind of knew where something was really engaging and really allowing children that health and well-being, those experiences outdoors. The other thing we tried out as well was, um, you know, we did a lot of artwork outside using lots of different things. And the P4 to 7 children put together a pop-up art gallery one day. And it was just that pride that there's actually an end product to what they've been doing. And we put it together in a thing link. Again, thing link is um, becoming a bit of a buzzword in our school. But just what a lovely way of sharing with the parents because they didn't really know what was happening because um, you know they're not allowed into the school just now. But to share it in this way gave great ownership to the children 
and in the young people and allowed them to be really proud of the legacy they'd left behind. So those were the sort of stepping stones towards building our expeditions. So I'm going to pass back now to Liam, who's going to take you on a walk in the past at DICE. Thank you, Jenny. So um, our um, journey, as we've described already, has um, been based on the month. So we're now moving forward into what, what we're really focusing on for February. We looked at a context of a walk in the past at DICE. We wanted to build on the ethos and life of the school community as a community, which had been developed throughout January as one of our four contexts. And we really thought there was a great idea there and a good um, opportunity to enhance that by looking at our local context and developing a walk in the past at DICE as a learning context. So as you'll see from the screen here, there's an opportunity for you to have a little look at um, how we fitted everything together for this new context. We as a whole team were a bit more confident again at planning using the four contexts as an approach. And as you'll see, we were trying, the approach really here was to try and bring everyone together and really tap it into our local context. You'll see from the opportunities for personal achievement, there were opportunities for family learning and opportunities for family involvement whilst at home. Um, there were to enhance the ethos and life of the school's community. It was really focused on that personalisation and choice. It was giving it over to our learners in terms of what they wanted to find out about our community in DICE in the past. Um, and how they wished to present that. And the opportunities there really were to then bring it all together to create a virtual museum. The idea was we're going to have a launch and celebrations for the museum at the, at the end of February. And really the key focus was on ensuring each child had their own way of sharing something to do with the, the um, local community in the past. Um, so th this culmination of a museum was, was really our focus. Um, but looking as well at the curriculum areas and subjects, that was something which has continued in February and will be continued throughout our planning using the four contexts. We feel that as part of our recovery and moving forward post-COVID um, is to ensure the curriculum entitlement still for all learners. Um, so really that um, planning to, to ensure consistency across the school is helping us to move forward as a school. So. When we planned and, and really bringing all those opportunities together um, across the board for walking the path at DICE, we had learners um, collating evidence across all areas of our community, speaking to um, elderly residents of the community, speaking to family members, going on walks around our community to discover, for instance, the DICE stones, um, our picture stones in the community, and um, looking at the history of the airport. Um, some children did a lot of personal research about different um, local businesses. Um, that some of which were personal to their families, just a lot of real personal learning um, which brought this context together and culminated in the um, DICE Museum, which you'll see in the next slide, we created our own museum. So this is our walk in the past at DICE Museum, and you've guessed it, another ThingLink. Um, so we used and, and really embraced the opportunities of ThingLink to create this, this tour context. ThingLink um, has good opportunities to make a tour using, you can, you know, the 3D images, you can use video, all sorts, um, to, you know, the links to documents so that we can gather evidence across the board. It was separating into our, we call them units or learning zones of the school, and um, we're an open plan school with different areas, so we've organised it into terms of, in terms of where the children are in school. And we also added the, what we felt was the vital element of a guest book. Um, so you'll see from um, my next slide, really, a little clip of just to share what the museum was all about.
So again, another dramatic but short clip there um, to really just <laughs> emphasise that we are on a journey and you'll keep hearing this throughout our presentation. And it was just a little bit um, to share with you some of the real gains from the Dice in the Past context. I think, you know, the, the high level messages from the clip were that children were really leading the learning for us um, and leading us on this journey. And the museum, we didn't know what it was going to look like until we had all of the pieces in from children. As you saw, the, you know, we had our pupils um, interviewing people, the creative approaches using um IT and um, other tools to just bring everything together and children choosing the ways in which they were going to approach this. Again, uh, you know, reflecting on that theme of being on a journey, we used again for February the four contexts to evidence creative approaches across the school. And you'll see in other classes um, evidence here across the four contexts. Again, reflecting on this journey, you'll see it's a little bit more detail starting to come together a little bit more with lots more pictures. Um, and it's really ref reflecting our development as a whole school um, for evidence in our creative approaches and also our journey. And if we move to our last slide, we're particularly proud of our virtual museum but we are aware that this is our first year um, with that approach and we hope to continue this approach year upon year to build on this museum context. So we looked for feedback and I'll give you a chance just to read through some of the feedback. We looked for feedback from all key stakeholders in school, so our pupils, staff, our parents and the wider school community um, and had, and as you'll see, lots of very interesting and positive feedback. We also had feedback that will help us to improve and to grow this context year upon year. And I think, you know, the, the major um, silver lining, to borrow one of Jenny's phrases here, um, was that our community felt involved in this and although apart during lockdown really felt that they were still part of the school by inputting majorly into this approach. So we move over to our next um, slide and really I'm going to hand back across to my next presenter again, Gillian. Okay, so that takes us to March. In March, was starting off in our heads as a world of imagination and it's now been given the twitter hashtag of monster march because there are monsters quite literally popping out of every part of the school so again we used the the four contexts for planning we had the explore the design create and share as our four main buzzwords for want of a better phrase they were really the kind of hinge the hinge sorry for each week of our month and building on the success of the virtual museum and the with the return of early years to primary three we really wanted to embrace the outdoors and really and develop this imaginative context so again we worked with um, our partners so we had um, adventure aberdeen in because we always like to have a fire why not and we this time extended and we worked with um, Geronimo, who are an artist partnership, and we had some storytellers who were set up in our TP when it wasn't overly windy. We had uh, Mrs. Watson chasing our TP down the playground on more than one occasion. So we're learning as we go about how um, exposed we are in the Northeast. So coming back to school in February, we had eight classes as well as our early learning centre coming back we are a very very big school so we timetabled half day expeditions for each and they were led and supported with Michelle Watty our PE specialist Adventure Aberdeen the storytellers and ourselves um, coming out to, to help and support as well and from the very first expedition the monsters really captured the imagination of not just our learners but our staff as well so again, you know, those explore, design, create and share, have the, the staff have really gone with that and the, they've really handed it over to the children. And everywhere you go, every classroom has has really embraced that context. It's, it's gone right through into their writing, their reading, they've chosen class novels where there's an element of monsters or surprises in them. And the the fun that has been in the school has been brilliant. It's been really nice to come back 
and hear children laughing, children having fun, children not being scared and just children being children. I think that really is the most important part of it. We had our hub, uh, our upper stages hub children still with us at that point. So our primary six and sevens were given the opportunity to be in the leadership role. So they worked with Sally from Adventure Aberdeen and we're really getting some training about what that meant. What does it mean to be a leader on an expedition? So they've been working with um, the younger children and now that the older children are back they're actually still developing that role and it's now the whole of primary six and seven as opposed to just the ones that were in with us in the hub. It's been really super that we've been allowed to continue our partnerships um, and obviously we just had to work around um, the, the COVID regulations so that we can still have people like Sally and the adventure uh, the storytellers in with us because they really do add to the journey. Okay, Jenny, can we move on? So this is our way of sharing our, journey, our Monster March expeditions with our parents. So again, a ThingLink, I promise we're not actually being sponsored by ThingLink. Um, one of our members of staff is a very talented artist and we asked her if she could create a sketch note um, to show our journey. So very clearly in here, you can see the week one, week two, week three, week four. We're looking at developing the skills as well. And we've also got the feedback from home starting to come into there, as well as a little toolkit at the bottom, um, which is hopefully able to help and share with teachers um, the, the tools of the trade that we've been using. And again, lots and lots of ways of sharing what has been happening at home, because we're just feeling that those connections are so, so important. Um, children have been at home far more over the last year than they have been for a long time. And to then hand your children back to the school and to not know what's going on can be quite difficult for some parents. Um, so it's really nice that we can keep going. And the Thing Link is such an easy tool for that. We can share photos, we can share videos, we can link it to work um, on the, the Google Drive really simply and really easily. So we are going to move on to the next one, which is another another little clip, um, which is our monsters. Oh, sorry. And we've now got clay monsters popping up on our trees and our little woody bits as well. So there's, there really are monsters everywhere. And as I mentioned, um, the last time we introduced our monsters into nursery as well with our play at home. And um, really it's just sharing that context right from our very earliest classes all the way through. And that's just some of the examples that our early learning children have sent in through Cecil. Julian. Um, so I'm just going to finish off with just a few bits and pieces. Um, we're very much looking at the four capacities and um, skills are just so important. And certainly during lockdown, working with the children in the hub, constantly looking at the four capacities, looking at the skills they're developing. And really, we're at the stage just now looking at getting the children to be able to articulate what skills they are developing, where they feel their next steps are. This is the start of our journey. We're nowhere near really tracking that at this point. Um, we're kind of thinking the most important thing is that children can talk about their skills and then look at how we're going to 
in build on this over the next next term and into the following term so we can have a more comprehensive way of helping our young people articulate and share their skills. Um, but again, the four capacities are playing a major part. We share the language with all our partners. We identify the skills and attributes that we're looking to develop. So it's a common language, whether it's a storyteller, whether it's you know, the, the artists that are working with us, whether it's me, the SLT team, the teachers, we're all using the same language, which I feel is so important. So we're really excited about summer term. We've got three expeditions planned. We've got partnerships becoming involved. We'll be keeping with the four contexts for our planners. And we're starting to look about what can we grow for April. And we're very lucky to have Emerald Maintenance and One Seat Forward helping us with that planning. We started that a little bit this term because we've got our tatties being planted all over the playground just now. Um, so lots of opportunities there. In May, we're going to be looking at what can the wind power and really excited Global Energy Group. Um, it's actually Chris who's on this call who made that contact. They're really excited about becoming involved with that and you know, becoming our, our partner. They're pulling together a whole package for us so that our children can look at career aspirations in the energy world, but also to have some virtual meetups where we're looking at wind turbines offshore and looking at the mechanics behind it. But I've no doubt the whole playground will be a mass with kites and windmills and wind turbines. As always, our outdoor expeditions will be the catalyst for this. And then in June, we're looking at tying into some of the big sporting events. What can our bodies do? As um, Jillian said, our primary sixes and sevens are having expedition leadership training just now. So the primary sevens, part of their legacy will be to each class. We've got three primary sevens for each of them to lead an expedition around sports. What can our bodies do in June? And then we also been working with our staff in February in service. It seems like a long time ago we started to look at what our priorities would be for session 21-22 and three really clear from our jam board, three clear priorities embedding outdoor learning. So it's not just something extra, it's actually a catalyst. It is part of what we do. Looking at the pupil leadership, how we can extend and expand on that and health and well-being. So we feel that reimagining the curriculum at Dice School by looking at the nine expeditions across the school session 21-22 all absolutely embedded in our local context and looking for partners to work with us in each of those using all that expertise that there is in the community. And then very much pupil leadership, having the pupil leading the expeditions, keeping on with the primary seven expedition leadership program. Um, very early days, but this is what we're working towards. We're looking to have a co-design event with partners, parent counsellors super keen, the staff are keen, the pupils, and to see, you know, have a co-design event with lots of partners to see what our expeditions are going to look like. Um, we're not obviously throwing everything away. The school has its planners in its place. It has its bundles of E's and O's. They'll be working with those to make sure that we keep that coverage going because it's been a three year cycle. But just looking at it with a fresh approach and very much with the four contexts absolutely embedded and looking at how we look at the four capacities and those skills and attributes that we're developing. So it, it's really exciting. A lot of work being on in the background as well with resourcing. We found um, a pocket of money that had to be spent. Um, that's always a lovely thing to have to do. So we managed to equip all our primary ones with cellar pets and we managed to equip our staff with warm outdoor clothing. And we're kind of glad that the gym hall is out of use right now because just now it's full of loose play equipment in that we're now starting to put together into trolleys. We're getting some containers for the playground because that whole resourcing is so important. So it's easy for the staff to find the resources they need and put them out into good use. So we're very much, it is a journey. You know, we, we are looking forward to seeing where it takes us. Um, there's monster expeditions going on right now to another one this afternoon and in the you know the the field has been set up ready for that 
please follow our journey. There's um, a QR code there for our Twitter feed. Um, and, you know, we love to share and hear. We certainly glean so much from being with everyone today. And um, thanks for all those suggestions. Um, and there's also a request. Um, Julia um, is here with us today from creativity team at Education Scotland. Another huge privilege I had was to work really closely with Julie and Stephen during my time, and I loved all their collaborations. Um, so please, if um, Liam, could you maybe put that um, link into the chat as well, if you could give some feedback. But we do still have a few minutes now for any questions or for anything that maybe Julian and Liam have picked up from the chat that we would um, have time to share. We'll hang around for a few minutes now anyway, but thank you so much for coming along and hearing our journey.